Today, for us at AutoX, it's a very special day here, for we have some of the most capable off-road vehicles ever to have been made. For if it weren't for these vehicles, modern exploration would have been a whole lot slower. Military, rescue and aid operations would have faced far more grave challenges. Because it's said that at one point of time, a third of the world's population, the first car they ever saw was a Land Rover. And no off-road story is complete if you don't have a Land Cruiser. But coming to 2018, well, this year, Land Rover is celebrating 70 years of its existence. And for 67 of those years, the mighty series models that culminated in the legendary Defender were taking center stage. So it's these models that have gone on from establishing Land Rover's capabilities to defining its grid. But to see where it started, where this genesis began, it's here with the Series 1 where you will see how things began. And uh, well, I'm sure you're wondering where this pristine slice of history of the Series 1 came from. Well, it belongs to none other than Ashish Gupta, director and founder of Cougar Motorsports. Uh, so he's going to tell us a few words about his story with the Series 1, which he lovingly calls Jolene. Well, we came across this car in uh, Mani Banjang and it is owned by the president of the Mani Banjang Land Rovers Owners Association. It's been working uh, very hard for many years on that route from Mani Banjang to Sandakfu carrying people and goods up and down. And it was one of the few remaining petrol Series 1 vehicles which is still running on, the, on that route. We immediately fell in love with it. We tried to convince him for a few months to part with it and finally he agreed. So we bought it off him and uh, got it restored in that region itself. There's a very well-developed ecosystem of mechanics, parts, retrofitters, people who worked on these cars since the last 30 to 40 years. So we got it restored uh, there. A lot of body parts, etc. We searched around the world. Something came from Amsterdam, something came from UK, some stuff came from Australia. Put it all together in time for the Land Rover 70 years celebration. That's the result over here. So this is a 1955 Series 1 86 inch Land Rover. And and uh, we managed to get the, a copy of the dispatch register from the uh, plant in UK. So it was actually dispatched from UK on 17th of June 1955 uh, to a dealership in Calcutta called Devas Garage. And then since then has been, uh, you know, in various parts, uh, parts of West Bengal and, and Northeast. Oh, that's a beautiful story. Ashish, in fact, is going to show us a little bit about the capabilities of the Series 1, although not too much because this is a pristine vehicle. So let's take it ahead. The time frame that the Series 1 represents is in fact from the very inception of the four-wheel drive vehicle. So it's got locking hubs at the front, a twin-speed low-range gearbox, and leaf springs with a spring under axle configuration. History has proved that this was a successful formula as this very configuration was used for decades from its adoption in the 1940s. This 1955 Series 1 comes with a 2-litre 4-cylinder petrol engine that has plenty of low-end torque which comes in very handy both on and off-road. And despite being 63 years in age, the Series 1 still deals with off-road obstacle as a duck takes to water. And while you may think it looks a little crude, the Series 1 feels ever so refined from behind the wheel. What really surprised me was just how light the clutch pedal was and the ease with which you could slot through the 4-speed gearbox despite the fact that you have to double declutch through the first two gears since there is no synchro mesh. I fortunately happen to be from one of the last generations probably that drove carbureted cars. And well, uh, there's a different beauty to them. They're so mechanical and you can feel every bit of what is going on. The way you feed in power and you change gears, everything is very organic. Uh, so on that front, uh, the Series 1 today reminded me of my uh, days when I started driving. And um, well, it's something else really. It's so capable. You just saw in the footage there. Uh, you know, it's a fairly simple looking vehicle and it is simple. But despite that, uh, its capabilities were so good on the off-road front. Uh, and it, of course, is the standing pillar of Land Rover today. Moving on from the Series 1 to the Defender brings the obvious to light in no time. While they do look different, a closer look at the boxy proportions is enough to see the uncanny design similarities. I mean, yes, the fenders are less prominent now and incorporate the headlamps, but that V-shaped bonnet, detachable roof and foldable windscreen 
are all aspects they share in common. Step inside and aside from the plastic dashboard, door pad inserts, modern switchgear, everything including the ergonomics are not very far away from those of the Series 1. But don't think for a moment that Land Rover did not improve the off-road capabilities over the decades. For Defenders came with long travel coil spring suspension, anti-roll bars, modern engines and crucially a locking center differential. All of this combined with its insane ground clearance, an admirable approach, departure and ramp over angles along with its stocky 2.5 liter TD5 diesel engine means that the Defender is pretty much invincible off-road. A fact witnessed by the extensive preference for the Defender across purposes from explorers to conservationists to the UN to armed forces, it was the off-roader of choice for the harshest of terrains and conditions. As a child, I would have dreams, you know, I couldn't sleep. I would stay awake at night and then dream about one day somehow driving a Land Rover Defender. And today, well, uh, the dreams come true. I have actually driven a Defender and uh, as you could see in that footage, it's crazy cross axle articulation. Uh, this thing, when you put it in low range, has so much torque, you don't even need to feather the throttle, it'll just go up and incline on its own. So uh, there's a reason why Defense Forces, Military, UN, everybody's used the Defender for decades as their vehicle of choice to reach faraway places and uh, well, the Defender today has just showed me why it's got those credentials. As you can tell, there was very little that changed mechanically and aesthetically during the initial breed of four-wheel drive vehicles. And it was only from the 80s and 90s onwards that SUVs were transitioning into lifestyle vehicles with better ergonomics and on-road dynamics. And this 80 series Land Cruiser is testimony to this fact. For not only does it look more polished from the outside, but on-road driving dynamics became more car-like too. The driving experience itself was made more comfortable with better interiors, easier controls and more features. That said, powertrains of these vehicles were very much in sync with that of the vehicles from the Defenders era, with similar suspension setups and drivetrains. So this Land Cruiser has been actually quite a treat because as good and as capable as the Land Rovers are, even Defender, it's for like serious stuff and for which reason it feels more hardcore. Whereas this, this is extremely easy to drive off-road. Low range, there's plenty of grunt from the six-cylinder turbo diesel engine. So you have plenty of torque and it's all delivered in a very refined and sophisticated and comfortable manner. All of which makes this a very comfortable off-road vehicle. It's very capable and yet it's extremely comfortable too. And it would appear that the comfort quotient really caught on in the 4x4 space. For SUVs are becoming more and more luxurious by the day. And if we are to showcase the pinnacle of luxury SUVs, we would invariably have to turn once again to Land Rover. From its humble origins, the British mark today makes four-wheel drive vehicles that literally spoil you silly. Take this Discovery for instance, armed with a barrage of driver aids such as different surface modes for off-roading, hill descent control, all-terrain progress control that leaves you to merely steer the car while it drives itself off-road. Then there is the matter of wading depth sensors, automatically adjustable air suspension that can raise or lower the height as needed. This SUV provides an off-road experience worthy of kings. I'm also happy to report that despite all of its clever electronics, the Discovery still manages to provide a great deal of connect and off-road feedback to the driver about what each wheel is doing. So I really have to tip my hat to Land Rover for making the perfect modern four-wheel drive SUV. So there you are, having walked you through all the different generations of four-wheel drive vehicles, I can tell you this, that today's luxury 4x4s are supremely comfortable and capable, but in all honesty, it was the era of the Defender that provided the pinnacle of off-road ability, for the simple reason that they were built to a purpose. It can get very tough while off-roading and you need an equally tough vehicle that can weather the storm and avoid body and electronic damage to ensure your vehicle can soldier on. I'm afraid that modern SUVs are far too fragile with the delicate body panels picking up damage while off-roading ever so easily. Little wonder then that the original Land Rover from the Series 1 to the Defender remained in production for an unbelievable 67 years. In conclusion though, 
I would have to say that the basic principles of a lightweight 4x4 such as the Series 1 with good approach, departure and ramp over angles along with knobbly tires is valid even today.